This here is Cornelius, and I made him out of an old motorcycle frame that we couldn't figure out what type of frame it was from, and some shovels, and just a rock for the middle. This is a railroad pickaxe for the head, doorknobs for the eyes, and that's Cornelius. And this is Mr. Gulch. He's something I created. Um, for some reason, I had something on my mind. He's made out of different, like here's a, a gear that I found. These are the hinges here from my son's El Camino. This is a cylinder head from a motorcycle for the snout. The toes are railroad spikes, and uh, that's Mr. Gulch. My name's Mike Heck, and I'm an artist. At least now I am, after retiring from the Iron Workers Union Local 8, where I worked for 25 years. I worked hard. I was respected at work, you know, but then at the end of the day, I was looking forward to the end of the day, not just to go home, but just to have a beer. As soon as I got done working, went to the car, started up, cracked the beer, and started heading home. Sometimes it might be an hour away. Sometimes it might be uh, a half an hour away. So. Um, the further away, the more beers I would have, you know, before I got home. It'd be like every 10 minutes, I'd be opening another one. So six or more on, a, on an hour drive home. Then I'd get home, park myself on that chair and set my 30 pack there and just sit there and drink and think. Always had big piles of beer cans. Sometimes on my porch, you know, it'd, it'd just be stacked up, stacked up empty cans. I'd just come on, set another one right next to it and do the same thing. It was just a repetition. I did it every day for, for like years. That, that was just my day, go to work and drink. When you work like that, you think that you're providing for your family and you're doing the right thing because you're making money, you're providing for your family, but that ain't all there is to it. Uh, as far as um, helping my family and other people, you know, I was always willing to help and then uh, I, I did and I, I usually did a good job, but then I started being uh, unreliable where I, you know, you'd say, oh yeah, I'll come and help you. And then uh, I just blew them off. And then after a while, then, you know, they, they didn't even ask for my help anymore. And then there were times where, you know, Andy would um, ask me to help him work on his El Camino. He'd actually physically come in the house, Dad, I need your help. And I'd just say, yeah, okay, yeah, I'll be right out. And then uh, I'd never go out there. I, it's like he didn't even talk to me, you know, he didn't even ask me. I missed out on some opportunities. That, um, that he did, he actually needed me, and I wasn't there for him. Corey, he was uh, real big into sports, and uh, I went to a couple of his little league games in the beginning, and then they slowly, um, I didn't go to any after that. I guess at the time, beer was bigger part of my life than my own sons, you know. They grew up now, you know, and I, I, I missed out on a lot of things. They're never going to play Little League again. They're never going to do some of the things that they did when they were children, you know, and what dads were supposed to do, and I never did it. You know, I'm surprised he even, you know, part of my life now sometimes. I had the potential to, to do um, way, way, way better than what I did. 
you know. And it was in my heart and in my, you know, in my spirit, but um, the drinking took that away from me. So a lot of times, I, you know, I, I'd be depressed and I'd drink and then um, I'd be just looking for something to do. So I'd kind of look in the paper and find either a rum and sale or an auction. And I'd just, you know, rather than be alone and depressed, I'd just go there and be out and look for things. And then, uh, especially near the end, they just piled up big things and you'd get it for five bucks, you know. And here's me, five bucks, you know. Finally, I got a trailer full of all these pots and pans and dishes and all kinds of stuff that, you know, I, I had no use for it. I had no use whatsoever for it, but I, I just bought it. If I seen a Roman sale, I'd usually stop and kind of had a thing where I, I'd try to at least buy one thing <laughs> just because I was there. I didn't want to walk away empty handed. Sometimes I'd come home and have a whole couldn't fit no more in my truck. Empty it out and maybe do the thing the next day too, you know. And that's when I was drinking, I did that for probably 30 some years. You know, so I'd have piles of good junk, not real good junk, total junk, and then just a bunch of crap. And then the crap pile kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And, so I had 30 years of junk sitting in my driveway. Actually, the, uh, the city came and complained to me about all my junk. And then uh, I had to organize it maybe a little bit better and hide it. That's what I did, I hid it, you know. There's times where I'd, I'd get some things and, uh, you know, have maybe a vision in my mind that I was going to do something with it. And that would never happen. My vision wasn't clear because it was blocked by the alcohol. I kind of regret quite a bit when uh, my sister tried to help me when I did go finally go in and get checked out. After I got back out, I was going to enroll in a program and then um, I just blew it off. And that kind of really hurt um, my whole family because everybody was hoping that that would turn me around. And um, I kind of just walked away. And, Kind of went into a lonely part of my life. I just thought it was just me and my beer. Then it, then it started getting worse. Didn't feel like doing anything. Just sat and drank every day. Then I got in trouble again. And this time I was serious. When I got pulled over and uh, saw the lights behind me, I pretty much knew what was going to happen. And he came and asked me if I was drinking. And I had, did tell him I had a couple. And then that's when he asked me to get out of the car. And he did the field sobriety test. I knew I wasn't going to pass. Um, so he says, have you been ever arrested for OWI? And I said, yes. He says, well, that's what you're being arrested for now. I was potentially looking at three years in jail. I would have lost my dogs, my property, my vehicles, um, my job, obviously. I, w I would have lost everything that I ever worked for or collected. Would have been by myself. With nothing, absolutely nothing. 
I ended up hiring a lawyer because it was my third offense. And then he um, had mentioned to me about a program and um, it was to help you to, um, to quit drinking. And um, they, they knew how much I drank, you know, drink, drinking a 12 pack a day. They didn't think that I'd maybe be able to control that. But it was entirely up to the judge whether he'd um, even allow me to be a part of that program. It was my best option or my best thing that could have happened to me at the time. And then it was my day to go to court. I went in to face the judge. I was hopeful, but I wasn't expecting to be in the program. When the judge told me that he was gonna give me a try, I um, felt very relieved. And um, even though I knew it was gonna be a long road, he had some faith in me and he wanted to give me a second chance. That's when I really decided that, that I'm, I'm gonna take this very serious. And I'm gonna prove to that judge that um, he did the right thing. Also, I, I wanted to prove it to myself that I can do this and that I, I, I can beat this problem. And then um, for the people that helped me, the people that tried to help me, if I turn myself around and better myself, um, Maybe I could earn back some of that friendship. It was quite a bit of work, but I also um, learned a lot of cognitive um, tools and how to, the brain actually works, how you can utilize it to um, help yourself and others. There were times where um, what you did, they didn't think was good enough and you had to do it over. And they helped you, you know, and explained to you that this wasn't quite what they were looking for. So it was quite extensive, and it was a commitment. Every other week, all the people that were in the classes would meet at the courthouse, and then you'd have to, each person individually would have to face the judge. He'd ask you how you're doing and um, if you had any violations in your tests for drugs and uh, alcohol. And he, he was interested in how you were doing and um, showed somewhat concern to, to help you um, get through this. It was quite rewarding, you know, at the end that I completed this and accomplished that. and. Um, that was just a short road to a recovery, but I was on my way. I started becoming proud of myself rather than um, disappointed in myself. I was actually becoming proud of what I've, I'm doing now. After I started becoming sober, you know, and uh, having more time on my side and my thoughts and some of the things that I've learned, I started looking at more of my stuff and um, looking at it in a different way and um, started being able to use some of it and actually um, create things out of it. I'd start gathering pieces up and I uh, had putting something in my mind and then I started welding stuff together and creating things and um, it wasn't junk anymore. It was actually something that I created and it was kind of rewarding. To, to actually make something and visually look at it and maybe somebody else can appreciate it too. Many, many of the items I, I make are um, requests for people for um, donations, like the Lymphoma Foundation, uh, the CMT, uh, Make-A-Wish, different things and they have little like silent auctions. <laughs> I'm there and I see all these people, wow, look at this. I want this, and they keep buying tickets and keep bidding on it. And um, it makes me feel good because it's actually going to a good cause. And for me, it was just a bunch of pile of junk, you know? And these people are paying hundreds of dollars for it just because they think it's really um, special and um, something handmade. And uh, it gives me a lot of satisfaction doing that. 
It's kind of um, like drinking. It's pretty hard to stop. Um, I'm glad I stopped drinking. Um, junking might be a little hard to, to stop. If it makes me happy and it makes other people happy, um, you can't go wrong. I don't want to stop acquiring junk. I just want to keep creating artwork and making people happy. <laughs>